NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida is home to three of the most high-tech garages in the world, where some of the most skilled and dedicated technicians ready a spaceship for amazing adventures, and huge cranes move tons of cargo into place. I spent a lot of my time here, I spent my life here, this is pretty much my career, uh, working on the spacecraft, launching spacecraft, remodeling or uh, updating spacecraft. They're officially called orbiter processing facilities, but often go by OPFs, bays, or hangars. Since 1979, space shuttles have spent about two-thirds of their time inside the custom-built 29,000 square foot buildings. It starts with a short tow from Kennedy's shuttle landing facility following a mission, and some careful maneuvering to pull the spacecraft in just right. Then, platforms and a main access bridge surround the shuttle like a glove. Each high bay has a footprint that the orbiter, uh, uh, when it rolls in, it has to fit that footprint. And the reason it fits that footprint is because when we jack and level it to take it to what we call maintenance height, all those platforms then interact. And we try to keep those platforms with a maximum distance, can be six to eight inches, but a minimum distance of four inches. So as these platforms flip down or raise up, we need at least a four inch clearance all the way around the spacecraft. During the first couple of days inside the bays, technicians drain hazardous fuels, dry the engines, and open the door panels to gain access. Then, they remove the previous mission's payload. Next, it's on to about three months' worth of work to check the heat shield tiles, swap out the space shuttle main engines, and assess the vehicle's structural, mechanical, and electrical integrity. It's all extremely detailed work that requires quite the team effort. Uh, we do virtually the same testing and checkout and, and uh, work on the three orbiters, but, but each team has its own feel, and, and it's really created at the, at the leadership of the team from the flow director on the NASA side and the flow manager on the USA side. They set the tone for their team, much like a commander sets a tone for a mission. We all think we're the best, which is good, and it keeps everybody in a competitive spirit and keeps everybody on their toes. Columbia was the first shuttle to occupy one of these processing hangars after arriving from its assembly plant in Palmdale, California, atop a 747 carrier aircraft in March 1979. It didn't journey out of the OPF and to the vehicle assembly building until November 1980, more than a year and a half later. So what we were doing in Bay 1 is we were taking the thermal tiles off of uh, Columbia that were installed at the plant in Palmdale, California we were bringing them into Bay 2 and running them through the back shop densification process and then reapplying them to Columbia. At their disposal today are 30-ton bridge cranes with hooks at 66 feet high for lifting operations. Communications rooms, offices, and supervisory control rooms complete the facilities. Then we keep the temperature very, very uh, moderate. A um, couple reasons for that, mostly it's for the hardware. Uh, the workers benefit from that, obviously, during the summer months. It's nice working in here versus outside. The comfortable environment, meant to protect the shuttle hardware from corrosion, is a clean one, too. Everyone who works inside lives by very strict house rules that begin with foreign object debris training and orbiter access clerks who log everything that goes in and out, and it ends with daily and weekly walkdowns of the shuttle. Something as innocuous as a staple, which we don't allow on the, the paper products out here, but a staple in the crew module just finds a place and it rests. Well, during launch, vibrations, during the zero gravity, that staple could move around and it could create an electrical short. On occasion, OPF workers get to put their hands on the spacecraft or payloads flying aboard a shuttle, specifically those processed in a horizontal position. And sometimes they have to troubleshoot issues or replace crucial systems but not without informing the astronauts who will be strapped aboard traveling about 17,500 miles an hour into space. We try to keep them tied in or just in communicate with the problems that we've had and it's just a way to just maintain rapport and just so they know well, we replaced this box or we troubleshot this problem or we changed out this particular component so they'll understand that especially if it was an in-flight anomaly from the previous mission they know we addressed it and she's ready to fly. Uh, it's just been a pleasure. I, I love the space program. I know they love the space program every, every bit. And they are all so detail-oriented and so meticulous and precise. And they won't let something go that's substandard. I've known that uh, and uh, absolutely trust their work implicitly. And I'm very, very proud to be associated with every one of them.
That implicit trust could stem from the personal relationship each OPF worker develops with their shuttle while working in a bay. But you get to identify with the orbiter, uh, you spend time with it, or you spend time with the spacecraft and what you find is it, it, it takes on its own personality and you become attached to it and you actually walk around sometimes and talk to it. You know, you got to be good today, you can't break, you got to do this test, we got to do it on time, so you, you've got to perform and, you know, people look at you who are outside the business and think you're crazy, but in reality it's just the niche that you develop with the spacecraft. Thank you.